Welcome to the Drill Down In-Depth Answers to Oldfield Questions. I'm John Spears. And I'm Richard Spears, broadcasting from yet another undisclosed location. <laughs> I just hope you're warmer than I am, Rich. Um, is that, what so, is the temperature in Tulsa today? I think if we're outside, it's seven degrees, something like that. So, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Hey. If where in the world is Carmen San Diego, it's 70 degrees where I am, and that's why. <laughs> that's why I'm not there with you. Fair enough. Anyway, so, we, we, you've been, we, we've been noticing the actions of our brand new president and certain things going on, right? Yeah, right. So um, a couple of weeks ago now, in a signing ceremony for one of the executive orders, uh, President Biden sort of mentioned in passing that wouldn't it be a good idea if we plugged and abandoned or plugged uh, something on the order of a million abandoned oil and gas wells for both uh, you know, the purpose of uh, saving on greenhouse gas emissions um, and maybe also providing jobs to otherwise unemployed oil and gas workers, right? And, and, and there's it, nothing wrong with that. Who wants a leaking gas well? And we all think jobs is a good idea. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, so on, on the surface, that seems like a really good idea. Yeah. Well, you know, the first thing that caught our attention was this notion that there were millions of unplugged, abandoned wells. And so we dug into that and it turns out that that's uh, that's a legit estimate. The people who have sort of, you know, examined the data would say that there may be as many as two, two plus million uh, unplugged wells, although um, it's a challenge to find out, you know, where these wells are. The, the, the data series goes back to uh, approximately the well right after, you know, Colonel Drake drilled his first one and extends through today. So there have been millions of these wells drilled um, and not always have the requirements for plugging them been as you know stringent as they are today. So, uh, so when we don't know how, uh, what kind of uh, uh, plugging operations have done, they've just sort of been assumed to be unplugged for whatever that means. So it it may not be a fair assumption, but you know, the in the life of a well, it tends to go from big you know, big oil company to smaller oil company to smaller oil company to a guy working out of his garage. Mm -hmm. And the guy working out of his garage, you know, you know, he he dies and the, the well's not worth anything and it just sits there. So it, it's not, it's not a, the intent is not criminal. It's just, you know, so small that people quit, quit paying attention to it. Well, right. And in years past, there wasn't any thought given to fugitive emissions, greenhouse gas emissions, things like that. So uh, that's that's a concern now. But what I might, what I think we should talk about today is, A, is it a worthwhile effort to try and plug these wells from an emissions standpoint? And then B, is it a worthwhile effort from a jobs creation standpoint? Okay. Because the, but because the part that grabbed, grabbed your attention immediately after the millions of wells thing Right. was the number was the co2 it was the emissions from the well issue right yeah that's that right. Seemed a little goofy to you so there's there you know there have, yeah there have been some studies done where people have gone out and done you know sampled uh, emissions from unplugged wells and uh, what they have found is that on unplugged abandoned oil and gas wells the uh, average amount of um, em methane emissions um, is uh, averages somewhere on the order of 130 kilograms of methane a year. Okay. Now, uh, 130 kilograms. So about, you know, my body weight plus a bicycle. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's so, about it. Th that's not the reference point you want to have. The average cow has uh, methane emissions on the order of about 100 kilograms per year. So, oh, so it's so, about, so it's a cow. It's a, yeah, a little bit more than a cow, but that's, you know, but we also always hear about how uh, livestock are uh, a big source of methane emissions, right? Enteric fermentation, I think is the uh, oh, Lord. technical there term. Go again. And, okay. So, um, but what does, you know, so, but the industry doesn't think in terms of kilograms of methane, right? And so I've, you know, when you convert that to how many, cubic feet a day, 
does that represent? Oh, how much is that per day? Close to about 20 cubic feet of gas per day. So if you multiply that times 365 days, uh, these unplugged abandoned wells are generating on the order of about 7,000 cubic feet of methane per year. And just to, to think about it, in a, you know, you and I used to have jointly mm -hmm. owned a Fiat Spider. Yeah. A little two-seater Fiat Spider. Okay. I'm going to estimate that the volume inside the cabin of the Fiat Spider was about 20 cubic feet because <laughs> it was not very big. So it's like oh, yeah. the volume right. so, of a, yeah. the cabin on it's a Fiat fine. Spider. Well, so here's the other thing. I mean, 7,000 cubic feet of gas a year, right? Yeah. Um, is worth about $20. You know, we're selling gas for around $3 oh, in MCF. Hmm. This is about 20 this is about $20 worth of methane is being is leaking from these wells per year. So right. um, yeah, so um, so you know, you say okay, great. Let's go plug these wells, right? Um, you can't just wave, wave a magic wand. You have to run a, a well service rig out there, probably also a cementing unit, right? And all You might have to have a wireline truck and a reverse circulator. There's some gear yeah. you've got to have. You got to drive out there 50 miles around, you know, one way. So for the purpose of this podcast, we've uh, done some, uh, you know, reaching out, and it would be estimate that uh, in order to abandon one of these wells, plug one of these wells, it would take about 300 gallons of diesel uh, would be burned on the part of the service firms that are out there getting work done. Okay. Know, right, right now, I went to public schools, and I can tell you right now, the math mm -hmm. is going to be really uh, lopsided, isn't it? Yes, because 300 gallons of diesel will generate a, a little over 6,700 um, pounds of CO2. <laughs> and, um, and, and again, these wells oh. are leaking methane and CO2 about eight pounds of co2 per year so uh so you to abandon one of these wells the, oh, no. the, the, the effort would generate about 800 times more co2 than what would be saved by closing these wells up right okay and so <laughs> just in simple math terms yeah it'll take 800 years right to get the co2 investment Back. to balance Right. Yeah. Now you're also you're you're also you know shutting in methane and so and methane has its own kind of greenhouse gas effect and so forth. So it may not be you know when you take CO2 and methane into consideration, maybe it's not quite as lopsided. But clearly there's there's going to be some uh, emissions generated in order to abandon these wells. And so I, I one I would think about that and say you know the the environmental community may not be real anxious to create more CO2 than in order, you know, it, or in, in their eyes. And so I'm not sure that there would be a lot of um, support for this kind of an exercise. But the other thing too is, you know, it costs, uh, it's been estimated that the cost of abandoning a well, plug and abandon it, is somewhere between twenty five dollars and $50,000 per well. So um, when you think about the cost of abandoning a million wells, that's at the high end, $50 billion, right? That would be with a B. That would be with a B. And then you think about it and you go, okay, well, your average well service workover crew might be able to P&A one well a day. These can be done pretty quickly, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that says they can do 250 P&A jobs a year. A million wells takes 4,000 well service workover crews, right, to uh, to to get the job done in a year's time, anyway, right? <laughs> so, so now you're you know you're employing 4,000 crews. You've probably got an average of about 10 jobs per crew, you know. So you're spending 50 billion dollars to support 40,000 jobs, uh, it's a cost of a little over a million dollars a job, basically. And again, <laughs> that doesn't seem to me to be a no. worthwhile kind of, you know, there's got to be a higher return effort if you want to, no. um, you know, try and do something about job support in the oil and gas industry. So I think for a couple of different reasons, we're probably not going to see a strong push in this area. It just doesn't seem to me to make a lot of 
sense either from a you know from a job support standpoint or from a uh, environmental you know cleanup standpoint either so would you be willing to go to congress and testify to that, <laughs> to that uh, well, I'll, I'll sit down with them and let them you know work through the numbers but we'll see if they uh, you know how that might work but you know it, it's just it's math is a scary thing and yeah. science is a scary thing once you once you embrace it and do a, little, do a few things. I appreciate the president's uh, heart for yeah. uh, reducing CO two emissions and methane emissions and and to do jobs, but you know sometimes these are not these are bad economic decisions. Maybe most of the time they're bad economic decisions. Yeah, I, I think we just have to be would have to be smart about doing it. Uh, uh, clearly, I think what this all tells me is that if you really want if the industry and uh, the administration wants to, you know, minimize methane emissions. Not focus so much on your old abandoned wells, but rather the existing facilities, right? The ones that are, you know, handling all the gas we're producing right now, because that's going to be where the major, uh, major emission problems are going to be found, and where the real high return on your investment, I think, would be, uh, would be, um, would be realized. So, anyway, all good and stuff there. Hey, so, but uh, mm -hmm. I know that our listeners, if they've made it this far in the podcast, have been yes. dying to know the answer to last week's puzzler. I know and I don't, because yeah, I don't actually remember last week's puzzler, other than it had a husband and a wife uh, walking uh, side by side, mm -hmm. and one of them said, "I I feel like I've walked four miles," and the other one said. Uh, I've walked five or six miles, and how could that possibly be true? Yes. So the uh, so we had so we have an answer. We had an answer we anticipated, but the number of answers that we got in that were actually had not been answers we contemplated, but were actually right because they 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 factored in on they included a discussion of bickering spouses. That was interesting. <laughs> we had. We had uh, more than one who discussed the very nature of physics. So that's and circumfry circumferences and uh, mm -hmm. it so fascinating. Uh, I'm glad that between you and me, we have uh, two and a half engineering degrees. Uh, we had one that talked about well, the wife was carrying her overweight husband. So we it was a range of things, but the correct answer. Uh, but by the way, the correct answer uh, gets. The Carney Award, named after the very first winner mm -hmm. of of the puzzler, the very first one. The Carney Award for the correct puzzler answer goes to Kelly Starr, uh, I think from Tyler, Texas, who said, "This is it. The two were walking side by side on treadmills, and the treadmills were set at different speeds." So, uh, Kelly, the Carney Award goes to you for this for this second. Uh, puzzler and what we want to just tell people is stay tuned for next week where we have a brand new puzzler coming up and this one is fantastic i'm excited that we'll uh, whenever we get to present it i'm loving the answers rich anyway thanks so much for everybody for uh, listening to us this has been the drill down i'm john spears and i'm richard spears